Hi everyone, I am Siddhartha Asiri from Cisco Labs EAG R&D team. So in this video we are going to discuss about how does an OCR tool work. So let's jump into the video. So this is the agenda today. So we are going to first we are going to discuss about what are the main components of an OCR tool. So this will include uh, text detection, character segmentation and character recognition. So these uh, all these steps will be based on machine learning. So next we will be discussing about how we are going to construct a machine learning model to do the, all the, all those kind of things. So next I am going to do a small demonstration on how to create a character, character recognition model with support vector, vector machine. Then there is an open, uh, open source library called as PyTesseract. So I am going to use that tool to do a uh, demonstration regarding how to do a, a proper OCR process with the uh, open source tool. So finally we are going to discuss about what are the applications of this OCR. Okay, so this is the end goal what we are trying to achieve here. So we have an image which contains some textual content. So we pass it through our OCR application. So it will output the our uh, extracted textual content. So this is the uh, overall goal what we are trying to achieve here. So the main components of OCR process is uh, first step is do the text detection. Then we need to do character, character segmentation. And finally, we do the character recognition part. So let's uh, discuss each of these steps now. So the first step is text detection. So text detection is uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to identify the areas which include the textual content. So in this uh, image, you can see uh, there are some regions which contains the actual textual content. So before do the actual uh, conversion, we need to identify what are the appropriate regions which contains the actual uh, text. So we have to find these boundaries to do the, to, as the initial step to do the OCR process. So the problem is how we are going to write an actual program, actual logic to do automatically do this task. So it is obvious that we can't write an exact logic directly uh, to identify these areas. So that's why machine learning come into the play. So with machine learning, we, try, we are trying to approximate this solution by uh, going, going through some examples. So we have to prepare a data set. So this is, a, this is a problem called as classification problem. So since we have uh, two classes here as textual content and non-textual content, so this is called as a binary classification problem. So our data set should include images with, uh, with images with include textual content and images which don't have the textual content. So in our case, uh, this is a positive example and this is a negative example because this doesn't contain any text. So what we need to do is we need to accurately train a model to classify each of these uh, classes. So once we do have such kind of model, then we can uh, do the text uh, identification process. So we can achieve this task using the mechanism called as sliding window. So in sliding window mechanism, we have a fixed window like this and we will be sliding this uh, throughout the image horizontally and vertically and we, cap uh, we make small images like this. So we scan the whole image with the fixed size window and we get these small kind of images. So then what we are going to do is we, we feed these small images to our trained model. So it will predict whether it has textual content or whether it contains textual content or not. So by passing all these images, finally we will be able to aggregate those results and come up with this overall, uh, overall result. So after, th after this uh, step, we, be we will be able to identify the areas which contain the actual textual content. Okay, so now the second phrase is to uh, do the character segmentation. So in previous step, uh, we found what are the phrases in the image using the machine learning model. So, but the thing is we, we can't directly convert a phrase to the actual textual content. So what we need to do is we need to separate those phrase into small characters. Then we can convert character, uh, character then we can do the conversion by character by character. So this process is called as character segmentation. So what we are trying to achieve in this step is uh, we need to split this phrase into single characters. But the problem again is how, do, how we define these boundaries. 
So as previously, we are going to apply machine learning again, because this is not a trivial problem. So this, this also have two classes, like uh, the negative classes are images which have only one character, then we don't need to do any split. And the positive examples are images like this. So it, it has one, two or many uh, characters in the single image, which we need to do a split. So what we are trying to do is we apply the same sliding window mechanism again. But the only difference is this is one dimension sliding window because we have a, uh, we only need to scan this image horizontally now. So we scan through the phrase and we apply, uh, we feed these images to a machine learning model and we uh, train a proper machine learning model with that. So if we have a properly accurate model, then we can, uh, we can get the what are the characters in a phrase. So in the first step, we, we, we figure out the what are the phrases in the image. In the second one, we uh, took out what are the characters in the phrase. So now we can do the actual character recognition part. So since we have now the characters, based on the shape of these characters, we can identify what is the actual, actual character uh, related to that image. So basically, this is, uh, this is also a machine learning problem where we feed these characters uh, found from the previous step. And we, we, we pass this label data set as well, we, what is the actual character of that one. So by trading those kind of things, we can come up with a proper solution. So this is kind of a machine learning pipeline where there are several phrases which need to be go through a pipeline. So the overall flow is like this. So in the first step, uh, we, we feed the, our, our image. It, it went to the, our text detection part and it identify what are the phrases in there. So this will be going through a second phase of a pipeline. So it went through this phrase and it do the character segmentation and it will uh, give us the what are the characters in this phrase. So these results will be go through the character recognition part, the final step in the pipeline. So it will do the actual conversion part. So by aggregating the results all of this, we will be able to convert this image to the actual content. So as I mentioned before, so all these uh, phrases are related to machine learning. So we need to construct machine learning models for every phrase. So this is uh, uh, all the phrases are classification problems. So we need to train machine learning classification models. So there are several uh, classification models available now, like artificial neural networks, logistic regression, random forest, decision tree, support vector, vector, vector machine. So all of these uh, models have shown good uh, results, but the studies shows that artificial neural networks have proven to work well in image classifications. So if you are going to discuss about the architecture of uh, ANN, there are three things we need to figure out. So the first thing is the number of input units and number of output units. And finally, how many hidden units are there? So usually the number of uh, input units and output, output units are straightforward. So since we are feeding an image to the model, the number of in input units is equal to the number of pixels in the image. So if we take 20, 25, or 25 by 25 image, there will be uh, 576 uh, pixels are there. So our input uh, layer should have that much about uh, input units. And when it comes to the output units, uh, it depends on the number of classes you have. So if we uh, consider te text detection part, we have only two output, uh, two classes. So we can achieve that using only one output units, whether it is zero or one. The tricky part is identify the number of hidden units and number of uh, hidden layers. So this is not straightforward like this. So it should be fine tuned for the best accuracy. Uh, usually, uh, you, uh, usually people use hyperparameter tuning approaches to identify what is the best uh, parameters. Okay, so now let's move to the demo. So in here, I am going to uh, create a, a machine learning model to detect handwritten, uh, handwritten characters. So in here, I am using a public data set called MNIST. So if you Google for MNIST, Uh, you can see this is the data set. It contains variety of uh, handwritten digits. So there are 
uh, many thousands of and thousands of uh, images are there. So I'm going to use uh, that data set in here. So as the first step, I'm going to import some modules. So this is the MNIST data set. And I have imported the support vector machine model and some uh, libraries related to plotting and some uh, matrices for, to uh, test our accuracy of the model. So first, I'm going to uh, import my data set here. And this uh, function uh, have uh, given me two functions to load the training data set and testing data set. So first of all, I'm going to split my data set from those functions. So if we uh, count the number of uh, images in here, so you can see there are uh, 60,000 images in the training data set. If we look into the testing uh, set, we can see there are 10,000 images. So if we plot those things, so I am plotting the 20th uh, element, uh, file in the set. So you can see it looks like a 4. So if we plot this one, it it's also looks like a 4. So there are uh, many uh, such images are there with, with different quality. So since now I have loaded the data set, now I am going to create the uh, support vector machine model. So here I am creating my model and I am uh, setting some parameters here. So SVM model have uh, several parameters like kernel, degree, gamma. So in order to find the best accuracy, uh, you need to tune these parameters. So basically uh, uh, there are uh, techniques like grid search where uh, we specify some uh, potential value, so it will try out all the possible combinations. So with that, uh, it will give us the best results. Uh, since that process uh, take a long time, I, I, I have just uh, do that and I have figure out the best uh, hyperparameters here. So I'm just directly going to use those things. Okay, now since we have uh, created our model, now we are, uh, we are going to train our model. So you can see I am not using all the examples in my training data set as well. I am only using 5,000 images because if I use everything, it will get a, lo a lot more time since there are 60,000 images were there. So now our model training has finished. So since it is finished, now we can use it for prediction. Here using this predict, fu predict function, I am uh, using my classifier to predict on my test set. So it is still uh, doing its thing. So let's wait. There were 10,000 images in the testing data set. So now it is applying its model. The model is applying its uh, logic to every single image. So now it's completed. Uh, since we have uh, predicted the results, now we can uh, do the evaluation. So we, since we have the ground truth, uh, I am going to measure the accuracy from the actual test label and the actual uh, the test labels and the predictions from my model. Then I am going to find the position score and the recall score. So if I run those things, I can see the accuracy of my model is 94%, which is really good. And the position and recall values are really high. So this is a very good model. So now let's verify whether our model is good or bad. So here, this is the 11th image in my test set. So if I plot this, it looks like a 6. Now let's see whether my model actually predicts this correctly. So if I predict this on the same image, it will give us as a 6. So the prediction is correct. Let's try a different one. So it looks like a 2. Let's see what our model prediction. So the model is correct again. If we try a different one, you can see the model is correct. So we have uh, trained a good uh, model here. So similarly, uh, we need to create three models for the machine learning pipeline for the OCR process. So once we uh, bring the, all them together, we can create a, a good OCR model. So as the next part, uh, I'm going to use this PyTestRack library. So PyTestRact uh, is an open source uh, library available for OCR. So I am going to show uh, you how, how, how to use this library to 
uh, you to do the OCR directly. So here I have import the pill library, Python image library to open the images. And I have import the OCR library as well. Here I have written a function to digitize an image. So it will take the image path as a parameter. Then it will open the image. The next thing we need to do is we, we need to call this function from this library and pass the images with some configurations. So that's the that's the only thing we need to do. So this model is pre-trained for characters. So we, we can just directly get the text and finally we can return the text. So I'm going to uh, run this on this image. So you can see uh, this is an PNG image containing some text. So let's see whether our, this OCR library is able to capture this one. So if you run this one, you can see it is uh, successfully converted all the text correctly. So apart from just extracting the text, this library provides some additional features as well. So for example, uh, this one, uh, we, we can create a PDF file directly uh, from the PNG image as well using this image to PDF function. Similarly, we open the image as previously and we pass the image as there and as the extension we give PDF. So if I run this function, it will generate a PDF file for me. So you can see this is the PDF file and we can uh, highlight the text as well. So we can apply some uh, Searching features are also there. You can see we can directly generate a PDF from an image. So these kind of libraries are built using that approach, following the machine learning approach. So the thing is these models are already trained, so we can directly use them, which is way more easy. So when it comes to applications of OCR, so mainly OCR is used for digitize the data in textual format to digitize the data. So for example, uh, we can digitize legal contracts, bills. So we can make uh, APIs on top of the legacy data. We can digitize them for many purposes as well. And for things like data entry automation, we can use that. And in surveillance systems also, we can identify the number plates to identify in vehicles. Uh, and also to build things like narrators to uh, assist visually impaired persons. So there are a lot of applications of OCR. Okay, that's the uh, content for my uh, for my video here. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you.